potential. You need to think about what is your your goal, your strategic career plan. However, at the end, I said careers can be planned, but not scripted. To your point, I never in my wildest dreams thought about becoming chair of an association like IMA, but you know, as I was at Campbell Soup and taking on bigger and different roles, one of those roles related to internal control. I don't know if you know SOP, Sarbanes Oxley. Okay, well, when I was at Campbell Soup, I actually co-led our very first global SOX team. So when the regulation came, I was the one making sure that Campbell Soup became compliant with that SOX requirement. Well, one thing leads to another. So I like writing. I wrote an article about Sarbanes Oxley. Next thing, KPMG, the partner of KPMG, read my article and said, hey, can you come do a webinar for us? And by the way, this is back in 2003 or four, before webinars are really a thing. So I did one of the first KPMG webinars. I guess it went over pretty well. Well, next thing, I'm meeting Jeff Thompson, who's now president and CEO of IMA, but at the time was in a different role. We struck up a relationship at a conference, uh, and then one thing leads to another. Next thing, I'm on the global board. Next thing, I'm on the COSO Advisory Council updating the framework, which was republished in 2013. Next thing I'm in, taking on more senior and senior positions at IMA, next thing I'm chair. So sometimes you just go with it because sometimes doors open that you didn't know existed. So that's another experience I got to have as part, as actually the board liaison to the Committee on Ethics. And what I can tell you is, so how did it work? How does it work? Maybe two different questions. So theoretically how it works is, and it's a helpline, it's not, it, it's a helpline, it's not a, what do you call it? Hotline. There's a difference there. Um, but the idea is if you're, maybe you're in a company and maybe you're facing a situation that it's making you feel funny, you're not sure, it just doesn't seem right asked to do. So the idea here is you call the hotline, they'll partner you with, and usually what will happen, you'll call and then, you know, there'll be a time set up, it won't be, they're there waiting for the call, but you call it and then some, you know, professionals, peers, these are all volunteers, it's not staff, no offense to staff, it's all volunteers, professionals. <coughs> They'll set up a, a time with you and you'll basically, you'll talk through, you'll share, you know, here's what I'm dealing with. And more, more than not, what they're going to do is not give you answers. They're going to ask you questions. So, you know, they're going to challenge you to think through, well, did you think about this? Did you think about that? Have you considered this? Have you considered that? Did you try this? So they're going to sort of ask the questions to get you to come to your own direction on where to go next. What we've, what's been changing this year is we're realizing, as with many things that I made, which are also changing, it was somewhat U.S. centric, and maybe U.S. centric in terms of the phone number. The phone number wasn't working outside, and the, the 1-800 number, the free number, it was a, a, a for pay number, but you know that cost money, right? So. They're working, I don't know if it's out there yet or not, but they're working on creating a way that you can email um, your, at least email to say, hey, I'm interested in having a conversation. Then maybe they set up a Zoom call or a Teams call or something. But the essence of it is, is if you're facing some kind of professional dilemma, some kind of ethical concern that you have, that helpline helps you think through what are your alternatives then you ultimately decide what is the right next step, what is the right action for you. Logic School of Management.